Welcome to Gazroth Tutorials, I'm Gazroth, and today we are going to cover object rotation. And in this demonstration I have four cubes, and the first three are going to demonstrate the different ways that we can rotate a game object. And this last demonstration is a little fun I had, and I'm just going to kind of an example of what you can do with uh, the different code blocks. For this one, we are rotating two, and then when we take our hand out, we're rotating by. The difference is rotate two is global, and then rotate by is more of a local. Again, this one is the same thing. We're rotating two, but instead of instant, we're doing it over time. And then when I take my hand out, it does the rotate by in the reverse over time. Now this one uses physics. So when I put my hand in here, it's going to spin in whatever direction I want until its physics properties force it to slow down and eventually stop. And then when I take my hand out, it's going to do it in reverse. And here, a random loop. Basically, all this does is it randomly selects a rotation, and it will rotate to that, and then loop through that again and again and again. Well, let's take a look at our scripts. We have our rotate to by. So when trigger is entered by player, we are rotating cube to 45 on the X. And then when the trigger is exited by the player, we are rotating the cube by a negative 45 on the X. All right, and where can we find these things? In the script code block. So the triggers can be found under events and then player events. So when trigger is entered and when trigger is exited. And then for the rotation, go to motion and we have our rotate to and rotate by code blocks. We have our rotate to by script attached to our trigger, and we have our cube attached to our variable on our script. The only thing I have changed here is the collidable is set to off, and when an object is being manipulated by a script, you want it set to animated. It should automatically do this for you. But if it doesn't, just make sure you go in there and select animated. For our rotate to by over time, we are still using our triggers. And instead, we are rotating our cube to 45 over one second. And then when we exit our trigger, we are rotating cube by a negative 45 over one second. And our rotate to and by over time can be found in motion. Motion over time, we have rotate to and by over time. And same deal, we have our rotate to by over time script attached here and our cube attached to our object variable and our cube is set collidable off and set to animated. Our spin is a little different. When trigger is entered by player, we are spinning our cube by a one on the X in local space. And then when we exit, we're spinning our cube by a negative one. I'm not 100% sure why they use vectors instead of rotations. However, I do believe it has something to do with how they handle their physics. And our spin cube by in local space and spin cube by code blocks are found under motion and then physical motion we have our spin and spin in local space our trigger is set up the same as our previous triggers however our cube is set up a little different since spin is a physical motion we require physics so we have to have our motion set to interactive and our interaction set to physics and then in our physics tab we can manipulate different aspects of the object all of these can change how fast this spin will slow down. And then we have our random loop script, which is a little different. When trigger is entered by player, we are sending the rot event to self. So when rot is received, we are setting rotation, which is a rotation variable named rot. We are setting rot to a new rotation and we're setting the X, Y, and Z of that rotation to a random integer between one and 360. We can find our send and when event is received under events. And towards the top, we have events. So here's when event is received. And under event actions, we have send event to object. And in order to set, we have to go to values. And at the very top, we have a set to. We are setting rotation to a new rotation, which can be found under 
operators. And then towards the bottom, we have vector math. And here it is, new rotation from x, y, and z. And then our x, y, and z is a random integer, which can be found under operators, above vector math. We have random numbers. And here is our code block, random number. And we're setting it between a 1 and 360, which we can find under values, is our number input. We are rotating Q by the rotation that is set over one second period. And then we are sending, we're creating a loop by sending rot to self after 0.9 seconds. And we can find that code block under events where it says send event with delay. Now the reason I have a 0.9 instead of one is to prevent any stalling between event calls. That way it will continue to rotate to a random rotation seamlessly. And that is it for our script. And our cube is the same as these cubes and the trigger is the same for the others. And that is pretty much it for our rotation. Uh, there is one other way that you can rotate an object and that's via animating it. However, I will create a separate video for object animation and we will cover it then. If you like this video or if it helps you out, please hit that like and subscribe button because I will be creating many more tutorial videos. If you have any suggestions or comments, concerns, please let me know in the comment section below. Have a good one.